My name is Akush and I'm here to present uh, what I've been working on in the last few months, which is to run FVM inside Tendermint as an alternative uh, node provider instead of Lotus. So this is part of the interplanetary consensus or what used to be hierarchical consensus effort, which is kind of a recursive side chains organized under the Filecoin rootnet. And because we can't use the same consensus as expected consensus because you know storage you shouldn't be reusing it i suppose this is um we need a, a different consensus and one thing we use is as a fork of lotus which we call ud coin you've probably seen it many times presented by alfonso and the other one is, is this fender mint which is an off-the-shelf tender mint with fpm put in it so it's um all rust what i code but tender mint calls me so for anyone who isn't too familiar with Tendermint, it's a proof of stake PFT protocol. And there is a, a generic component called Tendermint Core, now renamed or you know, um successed by succeeded by Comet BFT. And it's very convenient from a developer's perspective because blocks are instantly final. You are only moving forward, never have to worry about unrolling, you know, rolling back your state. It's very easy to think about but it doesn't scale to thousands of validators. So you have to be uh, somehow sampling or, or letting people to opt into a subnet and uh, around a hundred validators can run it. And they're nice uh, Rust libraries, but what um, always comes with this is that the Cosmos SDK. So the Tendermint is the, is the bedrock of the Cosmos ecosystem. We are not using the Cosmos SDK because the Cosmos SDK is, is like these reusable modules of accounts and banking and transfer and transaction. Instead, we are having the built-in actors and the FVM that we use in Lotus. So that completely replaces it. Um, this is the life cycle of an application. So I'm the application tender and calls me. And this is the life cycle of how a block is, is given and fed to the application. So you get a header, then for each transaction, you get a deliver. At the end, you get to change the power table, which is the next set of validators who can run or produce blocks. And finally, it tells you to commit the changes to the database. So next time we, we all have to remember, but it has other methods to run the Genesis, to check, transactions that have been added to the mempool. And all this exists without Tendermint having any notion of what a transaction is. So in the tutorial, it's just key value pairs, but in our case, it's going to be our stuff. And we will use the FVM to, to interpret these. So there is two, it's, it's an evolving standard. So there is this thing, ABCI++, which at the moment adds two very important methods to, for us, which is, which allows us to, uh, inspect the transactions that are going to be in the next block and inspect them again before we cast a vote on this block which are going to be very useful functions for us to move into the hand and to replacing like full-blown messages with cids because cids are not immediately available like the previous fantastic uh, presentation showed that you you can have a CID, but you, you have to be able to look it up somewhere and it's not something you can just trust. So a fundament itself, this is kind of the architecture. You have Lotus in the, in the top and then some kind of nodes with three layers pushing messages between the no with these nodes and uh, Tendermint code is one process that I'm we have to run and then the vendor in process is another one. And because it's another process, we have complete freedom in, in how we deal with data so we can use IPLD. Tendermint is not enforcing it, not even providing us with any storage. So that's completely on us. And we can also do our own network communication because it's we are not restricted to like Wasm or anything. You can do anything you want. Um, so effectively, our proof of stake sidechain, and which with a potentially more child child, child subnets under us. So we have two important aspects. One is absorb, observing our parent. The, these are top-down messages coming from the parent, and we need to know when they are final before everybody applies it on the sidechain. And we have to agree that the bottom of messages are available. So. If if someone sends us a, a checkpoint, because that's how we 
propagate information up and down. Then the parent validators who are not running the sub the sub chain, the side chain, can only apply this checkpoint once they understand that most of the, the majority of them will do so and they have the data. So even though maybe one of them don't have it, but this time they can do retrieve it from their own bodies and it's it's uh, it's gonna work out fine so checkpoints are one of these examples where you have it can be any anything you know the size can be anything because like you can imagine that uh, for the root you have massive number of subnets potentially under it and they have to go through if they have to go through the root to send each other messages you know how many there's gonna be it's difficult to tell up front so so we thought that the, well, definitely a checkpoint can only contain a CID to, to some kind of list of messages. And we don't know how many there's going to be. So there's many two options. One, you send some commitment and then you feed messages one by one. Or like the previous uh, presentation, the IPNI said that you can advertise that you have it or you know, advertise that you, you are able to serve anything from the subnet, send the CID and let the nodes come to you. And for this to work, there is just this just two-phase publishing. The first, we publish the intent for the checkpoint to be included in the blockchain, but not for execution because they don't have it. And then let the parent validators get it and then vote again that they have it, and that's when it gets executed. And this is when these ABCI++ methods are important. For this, we implemented this resolver, which is somewhat similar to IPNI, I think, with gossip sub and bit swap to resolve content from anyone in any subnet. And, and with that, this is the architecture that you have your ABCI application, which is Fendermint. You, have, you receive bytes because that's what a, a transaction looks like for Tendermint, and then you, via these stack of interpreters, refine it into more and more, into messages that are more and more close to what the FEM can actually handle. So this might be a CID. Then we hand it over to a, a pool, to the IPLD resolver, where it can get it back from the network. And then next time, if it has it, it can just go through the to the FEM. Uh, we have a roadmap, but uh, the green means here that it's done. So we are less than halfway through our roadmap. And this is, at this stage, it's just FEM plus IPRD. And um, all this demo that I did is like available on the on the website, on, on the repo website. It's like 50 minutes. So I'm just now it's a very truncated version, but there is a CLI and an RPC client. And that's what I just I just wanted to show you here. So I I have a demo script that's checked in. It, it goes through the steps of setting up a Genesis file. And um, so we can have a quick look at that. It's, it's the Genesis of um, of Tendermint actually. So if you just run it run this quickly, then it it has a, a sec it has sections for like its own consensus. Nobody's interested, and then we have our own genesis we can't use lotuses it's it's it, we don't run the full lotus we don't run markets unless people want us to run markets but it has its own accounts and a uh, single validator because there's going to be a standalone setup so in these right two um terminals in the top i'm going to start the pandemic process and in the bottom i'm going to start Tendermint, and it's going to, here it says that uh, we are going through the Genesis phase and it's, it takes some time because the VASM needs to be loaded, but now it, now you can see it's uh, running blocks. So with that, I can go back to my, my other scripts. I have created some keys, so I have Alice and Bob. And I, for those of you familiar with the FVM, this is like the state i can i have the cli to ask like what's the state of an actor and it will tell me the balance and the what kind of um, code like evm or account it is and what's the current state and then we can do transfers let's just do a quick transfer just so the other other things check out so here there was a transfer so now if i ask bob's balance it shows that bob now has a thousand um tokens because that's what the 
transfer did. And then we can deploy Fabum contracts with this. So that one deployed as Fabum contract and returned to me this um, bunch of addresses. So this is like the delegated address, which we can copy and give it to this command, which calls a method on that thing. This is very not, you know, not something I would do, but if you look at, this is called a simple coin um, contract that I have deployed here. So just to quick have a look at, this is a solidity contract, which gives the owner 1000 coins of this thing. And then it has a few methods like sending and getting a balance, getting a balance as a view. And if I look at the, signatures then get balances this f a b to something and that's what we've been calling here but this is and actually this thing that it returned is a hexadecimal encoding if you decode it it's it says ten thousand. but this is not very user friendly so we have this other method called other thing other option to just run it programmatically so here it says ten thousand, and then and uh, you can see that these are the JSON things that come and go from the actual tender mintar PC because that's what we're talking to and, and we're decoding it. And just to have a quick look at, at what this looks like. So, so this, this example is, is like a script where you can, with static typing, interact with your family contract. So uh, this is the this is the contract I'm going to actually deploy it again in this script. Uh, and if the solidity compiled to me this ABI, so with that I can create, this is not done by me, this is another library, but I'm just saying that this is a nicer way of working with this. So we can create a simple coin interface, and then we can say that I'm just going to connect to the Fenderment, well, actually Tenderment, but with, with my client. I'm going to read my secret key, which is um, Alice is in this example. I'm going to check out. I'm going to query what Alice is nonce is so we can resume and send the next transaction so that it checks out. Create a message factory, bind it to the client, and then run this thing. And then running it means that I have a client who can, I, which I can now use to send transactions, send these ABCI queries, which I read only things, and do. What is a call, which is a trans, it looks exactly like a transaction, but it doesn't consume money for, you know, uh, everybody familiar with the Ethereum call knows this, that if you have this view, like a pure view that doesn't need gas, but we can use gas if we want. So in this, in this example, we make actually two calls to the contract. One is in transaction and the other one is not in transaction so the not in transaction just queries the low the low the node that you're connected to but you have to trust it or you have to run it with a few samples and they might not even let you do this because it it it's um you know, it might be your own node that you're querying but it, it does put a load on them or you do this transaction in which case you don't have to trust them but there's going to be a quorum because everybody runs it and you have to pay for it and it's just um says that these are the same so that's the test here and then uh, there are these library methods that are available now to, to query the state and it gives you back something that is uh, an actual you know statically typed actor state or deployed a contract with a method that is specific to fvm and gives you back the the return so you can read the addresses from it or, or and this is where the static typing comes in if you want to get the balance then you can create a contract and call it and it knows that this is going to return a big int that it can pass and you don't have to worry about the hexadecimal abi encoded stuff yourself so yeah that's just as an example of either calling or invoking a trans uh, yeah a transaction so it has the same almost exact parameters except with the call you can specify where on the blockchain you should run this yeah and um the way we see this used is is that if you run a subnet then you might want to modify the fvm actually so some of our 
some of the people interested in this want to run their own syscalls, like they want to actually connect to an external database and maintain that. So more like a, a Cosmos application where you do whatever you want and not restrict it to what the Lotus version of the FBM lets you do. And like you can't at the moment deploy user-defined WASM contracts there, whereas here you can just start your own subnet with the extra WASM, like extra built-ins that you want to run. And, and then that's up to you what what they do and how they do it. It's a more lightweight option to explore the FVM. And sorry if I went over time, but thank you very much for listening.